been seven years since the U.S. forces went on the hunt looking for Osama bin Laden. Now the story of how close we came and how we got away is finally being told. It wasn't long after the World Trade Center fell that the U.S. Army's super-secret Delta Force was given its orders. Kill bin Laden. I want him held. I want, I want justice. There's an old poster out west, as I recall, that said, Wanted. Dead or alive. Now the commander of that unit, Dalton Fury, reveals the never-before-disclosed details of his mission. The book draws on Fury's handwritten notes of the operation, which he scrawled in a small notebook while in the mountains of Afghanistan. <laughs> Intelligence intercepts had the Al-Qaeda mastermind pinned down in the treacherous Tora Bora mountain range near the Pakistan border. The area is as close to impenetrable as you can get with thousands of Al-Qaeda fighters dug in deep in hidden caves throughout the Rocky Mountain Range. Fury's team of commandos was under orders to link up with local fighters headed by the warlord General Hazrat Ali. The Delta commandos dressed like the locals and blended into the population as they pushed towards bin Laden. This meant no body armor or Kevlar helmets. But while they're still eager for a fight, General Ali seemed more concerned with speaking to the media and the ragtag local fighters were hesitant to get close to the enemy. Small bands of Delta Force and Mujahideen would slowly advance on Al-Qaeda, directing the massive firepower of U.S. bombers flying overhead. But each evening, as Delta wanted to push further, the Afghan fighters would actually pack up their stuff and go home. The next morning, they would come back, but the frustrating routine cost them lots of ground. Delta's orders were to support the local fighters and not to take the lead in the fight. And as much as the commandos wanted to take charge, they listened to Washington. Day after day, Delta called in massive airstrikes on Al-Qaeda positions. And the Afghans blasted away with their Soviet-era tanks. On handheld radios, they could hear the battered Al-Qaeda's radio transmissions, even bin Laden himself. And they knew they were closing in on America's most wanted. But just when it appeared that bin Laden was cornered, an Afghan warlord claimed that he had worked out an Al-Qaeda surrender and ordered a ceasefire. The Delta commandos weren't buying it, and they didn't want to let up. But when they tried to advance, the Allied fighters actually turned and raised their weapons on the Americans. So Delta waited, and bin Laden and his deputies most likely used that time to escape into Pakistan, where many tribal leaders promised to welcome him. The vast majority of Pakistani people from the core of their hearts support Osama bin Laden and Taliban and are in favor of them because they are innocent and justified to uh, stand against the USA. When the surrender proved to be bogus, Delta pressed forward, directing in massive fire from above and overtaking Al-Qaeda's complex of caves. There they found weapons, ammo, and still warm cooking fires. But Osama bin Laden was gone. Seven years later, Fury is proud of his men and his mission, but he still regrets not being able to fulfill his orders to kill bin Laden. And joining us now is Dalton Fury, author of Kill Bin Laden. Dalton, well, thank you for being on the program. Thank you, Sean, for having me. I appreciate uh, it. Well, let, first of all, let's talk about why you feel you need to be in disguise, number one, and in the shadows, number two. Uh, for me, two key reasons. Uh, the first one is uh, I authored the book, but the story is really about the men that were there. It's not just me, so I'm not looking any, for any personal notoriety or any glory uh, by any means. Of course, we failed, so there's not too much glory in that. Uh, and the second reason is I don't take these guys uh, lightly at all. Uh, I think it's important to protect my family as I protected the men in the book the same way. Now, as a, as a, and as a Delta Troop commander, you were in charge of about, what, 91, you know, Western Special Operations, uh, you know, uh, commandos that were there in the hills of, of Tora Bora, you know, in search of bin Laden in the hopes of capturing him, correct? That's correct. Roughly 90, 91, the numbers fluctuated as the battle went. How close were we to getting bin Laden? I'd say, uh, you know, the bombs could have certainly come very close. In my opinion, he was wounded. I think the intelligence community will tell you that as well. Uh, Distance-wise, I think we were probably 2,000 meters, uh, give or take, a little bit. You think, but and this, this, a lot of this goes back to the fact that you, you had intercepted, or there had been a telephone intercept of uh, Osama bin Laden, right? That's right. There were several of those uh, throughout the week or so that we were there. Uh, you have to understand the way that the signet works there, oftentimes it's dated. Uh, it could be several hours old, and that amount of time, the individual can certainly have moved. 
so unless you get another beat on him through another second hit, then you might be going to where his body was hours ago. Yeah, but uh, what's amazing about your story is you, you had a relatively small um, command in as much as the troops that you were actually commanding. You were working with and relying on specifically some of these warlords there, correct? That's right. We, our uh, specific mission was to link up with a uh, Eastern Alliance opposition group, a uh, self-proclaimed general named General Hazrat Ali, who uh, claimed to have roughly 2,000 fighters that he was going to put up in the Tora Bora Mountains. When we talk about the Tora Bora Mountains here, we, we are talking about some of the roughest terrain uh, out there, and we're talking about a, a pretty wide you know, amount of uh, real estate that we're talking there. So in that sense, how realistic it was it uh, for us to think with a small force, commandos going in, that it was really operationally possible to pull that off? I think it was operationally possible. I think, uh, you know, had one of those bombs killed bin Laden, then, you know, the Bush administration would be geniuses and we'd all be praising them. I think it's easy to money morning quarterback now. Uh, we certainly didn't have the, uh, the operational ability to do what we wanted to do. Well, listen, all you special op guys, you know, you put your life on, your, on the line for your country. You're a great American. Thank well, you for being with us. Thank you, Sean, for all uh, you do for the troops uh, out there. And coming up just in time for the